Well, I've got here a uh, Fluke 1652 multifunction tester. Um, I thought I'd have a look at this Era 1. Just really save people some money if they're thinking about buying them and trying to fix them because it's either got to go back to the uh, main service agent or it's a fault we can fix. But I got this basically for nothing. And when it came, the actual battery compartment has got corrosion on it so that wasn't working all of the batteries were actually there so they went in the bin unfortunately I do have a spare one of these carriers so first thing I did was obviously take the back off and then just a simple continuity test on the fuse and that tested OK. And then obviously a quick just, just check see what voltage we've got on these batteries. So we're starting at a good point. And 9.69. So if we drop that in. And now power him up. Error 1. As advertised. Uh, we can do a, a basic test by F, pressing F1 and powering up. And it looks like the LCD display is all working. Um, I think the newer model has got a memory button just there, which I haven't got on this. So I think the next thing we're going to do is just open it up and have a look inside. So I've heard reports of if it's clicking, it's fixable. If it's not, it's got to go back. But this might just save you the hassle of buying one. I mean, even if we fix it, it's still got to be calibrated, so it's not something we're going to end up using. But take it apart, it's pretty simple. Let's remove these. Let's covers pull off. And as you can see down there, we've got two screws. And the same down there. Let's get that apart. And then we need to pull these little tabs in while we remove the back casing which just simply pulls apart like that taking it apart we can now see the insides now I think the plan of attack with this is the first thing we're going to do is clean up all these connectors apparently there is an onboard fuse on here somewhere so we're going to look for that, it could be on this board, it could be on the bottom board, I'm really not sure. So I think that's going to be the plan of attack really, is to clean the connectors up, reconnect them, and then put it back together and see if it still works. Well, I haven't cleared up the connections yet, but I did note that if you just lift on this front piece, the front panel does come away, and there is a small battery there. So if we test that battery, now if this is holding up the memory of the calibration values and this chip's anything to do with it, I don't know if it is, it might just be the display driver. But if we measure that battery, uh, we've just standard you know, voltmeter or digital voltmeter, it's actually measuring. nothing so that's got to be replaced so I think the first thing we'll do is replace that so we're going to replace this battery I believe there is another one further into the board but we'll do one thing at a time we'll replace this one first see what happens so I haven't cleaned up the uh, contact switches yet uh, they do look okay to be honest so these ribbon cables do look okay but I will pull them out and push them back in but 
Let's get a replacement for that first. Let's have a look at getting these battery off. I think I'll put a bit of flux on there first. Just as to... Oh, with the soldering wire. So we've got the battery off. And there's your battery. Don't say anything on it about what it actually is. Well, we'll see if we can get a replacement for that. Had a quick look look at the uh, ribbon cables. These ones here. It's be honest, they do look okay. I've got a fibre pen, I will give those a clean. But we'll just tackle things as we go along. Okay, I've replaced the battery. I didn't have one, so I just bodged something together. And so this cost me nothing, I'm not going to spend money on it. So uh, what we'll do now, we'll put it back together and just see what it says. Uh, basically, I've just got a 1.5 volt cell and just soldered it to the pads. Reconnected the ribbon cable, put it back together. And we'll plug it in and see what happens. I'm not hoping for a lot. Yeah, still got error worn. So fix replacing that battery, although it's totally duff, hasn't changed anything. The functions still working for that. I will actually peel the uh, tape off. This and find out what it actually is. Um, maybe we can do a little bit more research than anybody, whether that's just a display driver or whatever it is, and we'll trace it back some of the wiring. But we'll, we'll just dig a bit deeper. I think the next thing to do is take this board off, check the components on there. I will look, give some full high resolution visuals of the boards. To remove this next board, simply unplug the connectors. Again, we will give those clean. There's three screws holding this board on. And this should just lift down there, as it does. And that's the next board. And we'll have a good look at this board. We'll check the caps, we'll check the components, check some of the larger value resistors, and peel off this, find out what this actual microprocessor is, and take it from there, really. And that's your bottom board. Just going to screw it in. If anything, could be faults on that board. Uh, there are some quite large relays down here. They might not be engaging. We can test all of these. But yeah, I think it's just one board to sign. Well, I think we'll have a look again at this button board here. It's just two screws here. Lower it loose away. And I think this black clip there is just held on by this clip at the back. So I can see that piece off, just this little clip here. Still got screws in it. And then this main board. What else is all doing this in? Nothing. Okay, so that's then your main board removed. And oh, there's the other fuse. It's quite large. I was expecting it to be a PCB mounted fuse, but but that relay looks in a little bit burnt so I can do a little bit of testing on all these components I'll check that fuse do that right. let's test that fuse 
And that fuse is reading fine. So that main control board fuse there is fine. And I think it's now just going to be testing some of these components, these large resistors. I might take one of the relays off and just check it. And I just decided to have a look at this chip on the board. This is the chip, U301, that's on the middle board, it's the main microprocessor by the look of it. Uh, ignore these little scratchy lines here, that was me just cleaning off the glue from the label that was on there. And it seems to be part number 83A10T and M430F149. The actual chip on the board for its identification is this chip here. Which is this one here. The top LCD board, I've taken the label off the chip just to have a quick look and again it looks a bit generic to Fluke again. Uh, it's actually this chip here which is U101 I believe and its description is there which is coming up as 75E8YJG and M430F44 and it looks like a 9 on the end. After a little bit of digging around on this board, I've been tracing all the components through. I've found that there is another fuse, uh, which is a PCB mounted fuse, which is F3, which is just there on the bottom board. I've checked that fuse fine. I've checked all the coils, I've checked all the transistors. Uh, basically, I've checked everything really. Um, I've just got some caps to check. But everything seems to be okay. So I'll carry on digging, but yeah, there is a fuse there, a fray. And I will keep looking, see if there's anything else anywhere else. And the only thing I would say to you is about this board is it's a multi layer board by the look of it. I think it's three layers in total. Could be more. And I've checked it for flexing and the rest of it trace tracks through, cleaned up all these ribbon cables uh, the best thing I can do now is just put it back together and then move on to the middle board and then I'm going to do the same with this board I'm going to trace everything through that I can check and I'm not sure whether this is a multi, it does look like a multi-layer board again so that does have complications if there is a burn on a track in the centre of the boards anywhere well, after quite a few hours of checking components, cleaning up ribbon cables, uh, changing that battery on this front display, um, I've put it all back together and we now have error one, which I wasn't expecting anything different to be honest. Uh, I think what it actually is, is the, this is my only opinion anyway, that the the battery on here went, it lost its calibration values and it now needs really to be sent back to a Fluke service agent to be recalibrated. This Fluke of Robinson 1652, was it actually faulty? Oh, I don't think it actually was. I think the combination of that battery on this main, main PCB um, dying, it's lost its calibration values and I think it, after I've been through every single board I've checked all the components I can't really find anything really wrong with it uh, I've checked all the ribbon cables um, everything seems to be fine There's, I can't find any I mean there are multi-layer boards inside it which if there is a fault in between the layers of the boards you're never going to find really not without a circuit diagram and I definitely Fluke don't give you one of those for these so I'm more thinking it's just lost its calibration values and the only thing you can do with it I think is send it back to Fluke I was going to trace these pins through on the back to see if this is where they program it from uh, but it's just not worth the asshole doing really I think I think basically if you buy one of these with an error one on it you're going to have to send it back for calibration unless you find a stupid thing like a faulty fuse on the board which there is two on the bottom board there's a surface mount one and a conventional fuse and obviously the fuse on the back here I think really 
uh, they're just going to replace any form of backup battery on there and basically recalibrate it now apparently you need software and some specialist calibration equipment to do that it could be plugged into here I really don't know um, so I think this is just going to now sit on the shelf um, and look pretty really uh, <laughs> I'm not really prepared to spend money getting it calibrated I think it's a 17 for egg meter and it's just not worth the hassle unless somebody out there wants to reach out and calibrate it for free for me um, it's just going to shit on its sit on the shelf excuse me and look pretty well i hope that helped anyway at least to give you a breakdown and a look inside the board so if you are thinking of tackling one of these at least you know what you're looking for now